thank you so much all of you for coming and I'd like to say good afternoon to Dana and Diana and good morning to Lisa. Good now morning. Lisa Alexander is a specialist family lawyer in British Columbia, Canada and I know Lisa from our membership of the IACP which is the International Academy of Collaborative Practitioners and she's a committed collaborative lawyer. Dana Roan is a specialist family lawyer, a mediator and a trainer from Latvia. And Diana Carrillo is a family lawyer with a strong international reputation based in Madrid. She's a fellow of the International Academy of Family Lawyers and I know her from there. And also because we've had each other on the same side quite recently maybe about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Forging connections with international colleagues has never been so important as now for UK lawyers. We are the pariahs of Europe. We've left the EU and our application to join the Lugano Convention has been rejected. So we'll be never sure when we're drafting nuptial agreements if the jurisdiction clause will be upheld in any other jurisdiction. So it's incredibly important to reach out to people that we trust in other countries and to make sure that we have a network of people that we can rely on for sound advice. And that is the background to today's webinar. The purpose of the webinar is to share our experience of how nuptial agreements work in our respective countries. Now in England, nuptial agreements are not binding in our family courts, but they are of compelling importance. If both parties have had legal advice, they've both made financial disclosure the outcome on separation is fair and meets the needs of the parties and any children. And the agreement is made without fear or duress. There's no need to choose a nuptial agreement on marriage. And there's no default position in terms of excluded property or future assets. And there are no formalities in terms of registration. I know that in your jurisdictions, it will be very different. So I have several questions to ask Diana, Lisa and Dana, all of which will demonstrate the importance of taking cross-border legal advice from people like these. If your clients are likely to reside in other jurisdictions or they have assets abroad. 